Variety Immigration Law is a great resource for the latest in immigration news and trends. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. It really helps out the channel. And click that notification bell so you never miss a video from Berardi Immigration Law. Hi, I'm Gabriella Agostinelli with Berardi Immigration Law, and I wanted to film a quick video about what to do if you are an H-1B worker who's been recently laid off. So the most important rule is as follows. You are given either 60 days or however many days are left on your I-94 admission record to stay in the United States, whichever is smaller. So if you have 15 days left on your I-94 record, you are only have, you're only going to be given 15 days to stay in the United States. However, let's say you expire this time next year, you will have 60 days that you can remain here following a layoff. And in the 60 day period, the following must occur. You must not only find a new employer who is willing to sponsor a transfer petition or change of employer petition for you, but that petition must be filed within that 60 day period. Now, many of you are left saying that's virtually impossible to both find a new job, to have a job offer extended to you, and to have a petition filed on your behalf. To do that in 60 days or less is a Herculean task. So where does that leave us? Well, from time to time, folks are unable to simply have the petition submitted in this time. So we file, we file something called a nunk pro tunk petition. Now, these are not guaranteed, but essentially the purpose of these petitions are to say, look, government, I know I was supposed to get this filed within a 60-day period, but for X, Y, Z reasons, this wasn't able to occur. But I simply cannot go back to my home country right now to get a visa stamp so I can re-enter the United States on a transfer petition. And I just you know, please throw me a bone and forgive me for being unable to meet the statutory deadline. Like I said, this is not a guarantee. It's not something that the government's going to just lay over and say, yeah, okay, go ahead, that's fine. What we need to be able to do is to provide compelling evidence for why, in fact, you were not able to meet that 60 or fewer day threshold um, and why you can't leave the country. So we've done many of these petitions uh, in the past. And one of the things that's particularly compelling as of late is COVID. It's unsafe to travel. Um, they I have fewer transportation possibilities. I have I don't feel comfortable leaving the United States to go to a visa stamping abroad. And further, COVID has caused such a mess within the Department of State's consular system that it's virtually impossible in many countries right now to even get a visa appointment timely. India, for instance, it could be years before you can even get a visa appointment. So one of the arguments would be is, if I had to leave the country to attend a visa stamping, I would not be able to come back anytime soon. And the corollary to that is you have your employer submit a letter saying, or this new employer submit a letter saying, look, we need this person. We need this person to start immediately. If we were forced to wait a year or more, the company would suffer grave financial loss. It may result in loss of further employment of U.S. citizens. It may result in um, a, a, a big impact to our bottom line. You can also bring in personal reasons. Recently, I did a case for a mother who's still nursing her child and who had to submit the petition after her I-94 record expired or after that 60-day period had lapsed. Um, and we said, listen, this child is a U.S. citizen, cannot be, cannot be removed from the mother at this point in time. Out of interest to this family, please keep them together. And invariably, the petition was approved. But again, I can't guarantee it's always going to happen. So it's super important that you don't sit on this and you get these petitions filed as soon as possible. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and all the best to you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that notification button so you never miss one of these important updates. 
Also, check out the Berardi blog that's on our website at berardiimmigrationlaw.com. The blog is updated two to three times a week, contains tons of up-to-date information on policies and trends. You won't want to miss it.